The highest and lowest points in Continental USA are only 90 miles away from each other. In fact, even less than that, and they're both in California. What's crazy about this is California is also home to the hottest place on Earth, as well as the tallest tree in the world currently living. The Redwood National Park just has a ton of really tall trees, but this is the known tallest living tree at over 115 meters. That's getting up there as tall as the Great Pyramid of Giza. There is actually a reason for the hook here in the date line in the Pacific Ocean. This is the line that separates one day from the other, and there's always been this hook here. And the main reason for the shape is actually for the island of Kiribati. They wanted to be on this side of the date line, but there are more islands included in that. I mean, technically the line is moved out this way a little bit more also for Samoa, and this is actually exactly why the line islands, Samoa and Tonga, become the first countries in the new year. So like when it's December 31st and we're entering into January 1st. These are the first ones to enter. They're living in the future, basically. The Hawaiian Islands are actually 22 hours behind the center of Kiribati, yet they're actually only about a thousand miles away from each other. This is a very strange looking island inside of Canada. I mean, it is technically an island, kind of, because it is surrounded by water on all sides. That's pretty much the definition to a T. It almost looks artificial in a way, like they intentionally created it so that it would be this perfect island. This is known as an annular lake or an impact crater lake, and it can be found in Quebec, Canada. There's actually something similar in South Africa, although it doesn't really have the island in the middle that Canada's does. In fact, so many of them are just kind of more, uh, lakes. They, 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 they just look like more normal lakes, basically. The weird shapes. It actually acts as a reservoir for Canada as well. The tiny island of Sri Lanka off the coast of India has the most waterfalls on Earth. I don't know why I never looked this up before. I've looked up the countries with the most islands on Earth, biggest mountains, tallest trees, but this single place squeezes in more waterfalls than anywhere else. And they aren't just like little waterfalls, too. These are incredible. There's a total of 382 waterfalls spread throughout the country. It's mostly due to monsoons, apparently. Now, a key thing to note here is waterfall density in the world. Most waterfall in the smallest place. However, it is Angel Falls in Venezuela that has the tallest waterfall on Earth. Something a lot of people do not realize, China does not have access to the Sea of Japan, or at least it does not have territory that touches the Sea of Japan. This is the range of the Sea of Japan, or the East Sea, or I guess the Korean Sea. I know they'd be pretty upset with me for not calling it that. But yes, China does not have territory along this, even though it would seem like they do. They obviously have a bunch of territory touching the Yellow Sea, as well as the East China Sea. And because of this, China actually borders North Korea. And one of my favorite geography facts, there's actually only one country that separates North Korea from Norway. That's right, North Korea and Norway are actually very close together if you think about it. I mean, there's only one country in between, so right. This is mostly due to the 19th century. Also, China is allowed to use these ports here that Russia has. Obviously, China just doesn't have the territory next to the sea. These are some of the world's most densely populated islands, starting in Haiti. Now, technically, this island only houses 250 people, but it is only 0 0.0016 kilometers squared. That's basically like a football field in a Way. This does not seem like a very fun place to live, but it's cool that everyone has their own boats. There's also Panggang, Indonesia, which is like my new favorite island name, Panggang. 6,500 people live here, yet it's only about a kilometer squared in terms of area. In Kenya, 130 people live on this island, yet it is only 0 0.002 kilometers squared, population density of 65,000 per kilometer. We have this in the Philippines, 2,500 people live here, it's only about point. 0 0.04 kilometers square. It's just incredible they can manage to fit all these people. I would like to live on an island as well, but I don't know if I want this situation. This is making me think of like the old scenario where like if you and a couple of friends were on a deserted island, this is how we're gonna build it up. Give us like 50 years. We're gonna start like a whole new civilization. Funny enough, Manhattan, New York is on the list with over 1.5 million people living in an area of only about 60 kilometers square. The population density isn't as insane as what we saw earlier, but it still makes the top 10. That is why 
why they have to build up. They're just trying to jam as many people in there as possible. And that's why New York's so crazy. Like, it still blows my mind that we, we, we did that. Of course, for reference, no one even comes close to the Kowloon Walled City, the most densely populated place on Earth, 3 million per square kilometers. Here are the 25 largest lakes on Earth placed right next to each other. Now, the Caspian Sea is the largest lake on Earth, and this image really just shows how far and away that is. I mean, there's Lake Superior and Lake Victoria, but they're still not even close. You'd have to combine the Great Lakes and probably Lake Victoria to touch the Caspian Sea. On the other side of things, you have Lake Baikal, which is actually the deepest lake in the world. That also is not very close when comparing it to the Great Lakes. It goes down almost 5,000 feet into the Earth. Meanwhile, I was surprised to find out the Great Lakes really aren't all that deep, especially in some spots. Rip to the Ariel Sea, which was the fourth largest freshwater lake in the world, more than 67,000 square kilometers. This would have been included on the list, but it has slowly gotten smaller and smaller right here next to the Caspian Sea. South Korea is about the size of Portugal, but has the same population size as the whole Iberian Peninsula. They're sitting at about 50 million. This is just South Korea too, not including the north, which obviously it doesn't have a whole lot of light pollution going on. That's just how Asia does it, baby. What makes this even crazier is in the aftermath of the Korean War, South Korea was one of the poorest economies on the planet. Now it has one of the world's largest economies and it's currently ranked 13. This is Antarctica's Deception Island. No, I'm not making that up. And it has a very oddly straight east coast. Like it actually looks artificial too. And it's weird because the rest of the island is really curved. It's almost like a perfect circle, strangely. Imagine if this place was actually habitable, how crazy this would be if you just built like population out this way. And then you just have this really weird, strange, straight coast. This isn't the part of Antarctica that is closest to Argentina. So maybe we can ship some people over there. This is actually a tourist destination as well with over 1500 visitors a year. You can actually see it's very odd shape, strangely on maps as well. Although this map does not do just how straight this coastline truly is. Why would they do that? You have the opportunity to put a perfectly straight line right there. Just, just do it. If you didn't know, this is actually a controversial map because different parts of the world teach different continental definitions. This is how I learned and a lot of people in the US learned. This is North America, this is South America, this is Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, Oceania, that's the one different sometimes, and Antarctica. I think I was taught about just Australia being a continent, but I'm glad it changed to Oceania. But many places, specifically in Latin America, teach there's only six continents, North and South America. America just being a part of the same one. And of course, there's also the teaching that Eurasia is a singular continent. And I'm sure there's people combining both those ideas that America is just one continent and Eurasia is just one continent, bringing the total to only five continents. I learned the hard way very early on into my YouTube career that everyone has different definitions for what the continents actually are. I guess it doesn't really matter, but I can kind of see both sides there. I just don't think we should have Australia be its own continent. Like I just throw in New Zealand. At, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, Australia. But there are also some some people that base it purely off the major plates of Earth. If that's the case, North and South America are different. There's the Eurasian plate, so those two are coming together, and then Africa, Australia, and Antarctica. I gotta admit, at least this one has like some science behind the reasoning why. I believe I've also seen some people say that the Central American or Caribbean plate is also its own continent. There's also a four continent theory, which just combines Afro-Eurasia, or the Old World and the New World, and then you have to include Antarctica and Australia, although that includes Papua New getting in New Zealand. I don't know. Oh, New Zealand isn't even a continent. In this theory, it's just grayed out. Like, whatever. Highly controversial topic in the geography community. Don't bring it up. That's how you ruin Thanksgiving. There is actually no bridge connecting Italy to their island of Sicily. Though you think there would be, since this distance isn't that far, uh, there's, there's not. That skinny strip of water is only about three kilometers or two miles at the narrowest point. For reference, this Chinese bridge is over a hundred miles long. So it's definitely possible. Italy does does plan to eventually build a bridge. It's just been taking a minute. The bridge has been proposed since ancient times. If they build it, this would be the longest suspension bridge on Earth. There's just been a ton of budget constraints, basically. It's projected to begin to resume work in 2024, though. Unsurprisingly, the most isolated city on Earth with over a million population is Honolulu, Hawaii, as it is 2,000 miles away from the coast of California. It's actually not just Honolulu, it's the island itself of Oahu. The 
entire island itself has over a million population and it just recently passed that number up. But before that, the title holder was held by Perth, Australia. That's right, Perth. Australia. It, it's not an island. Perth, Australia, with nearly 2 million people living in it, was the most isolated city on Earth. It's actually probably going to be the new most isolated city on Earth with over 2 million population. I'm sure you're wondering how exactly this is possible, and that is because the population density of Australia is insane. Try to mention this as many times as possible, but everyone just lives right here. It's like the most habitable part of the entire landmass. Nobody lives here. It is, it is just a giant desert. So Perth, believe it or not, was actually extremely isolated. It might as well be just an island in the middle of the ocean at this point. It's close enough. The built-up area of Atlanta, Georgia versus Barcelona. 2.5 million people live in this area here. Meanwhile, 2.8 million people live in Barcelona, Spain. This area here. Quite the difference. I mean, that's just how we build American cities. It's just like sprawling suburbs. And that probably just comes down to tradition at this point. We have all this land. We're just gonna spread out. The problem with spreading out is it's really hard to move people. Maybe that's why our public transit is so bad. There's probably a lot of reasons why that is. Also, a big factor here is honestly cars. I mean, Atlanta, Georgia was started before cars, but uh, it turned into this because of cars. Most European cities were built way before that. Probably another reason why they also have great public transit. You don't gotta make subways go like for miles and miles and miles. Well, you do kind of, but it's all in the same area, you know. A very strange but difficult question to answer. Why do all the major peninsulas drip south. Of course, there are a couple outliers, but you have South Asia, the Arabian Peninsula, Argentina and Chile in this part of South America. I mean, you even have smaller examples like Florida and Italy. There's the Iberian Peninsula, which is basically south. The Korean Peninsula. Again, there are outliers, like here in China or the Yucatan Peninsula. But there are so many that do go south, it's weird, like Baja California. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but for everyone that I see that's not going south, I feel like I'm seeing two go south like Norway and Sweden. Out of the top 10 biggest peninsulas on earth, I count seven going southward. I mean, I'd say only one is going north and that's the Labrador Peninsula. Alaska goes west and the Horn of Africa goes east, but the rest of these, they're leaning south. I, I don't I don't know what else to say. I don't know why that is. The Balkan Peninsula, the Indochina Peninsula. I mean, I would assume this has to do something with plate tectonics in a way. Something I do find interesting is all of these examples can be found in the old world. The two big ones here are just in America, North America specifically. I can't tell if this is just one of those things that's just in my head or if we are actually onto something here. It really feels like a lot of them are going south though. And big thanks to my patrons. Destiny Drew Ducker, Drew Ducker Sebi, if you hear this, I love to you. Drew now. I am the kidnapper. Uh, fat, I Norwal, moved to Drew since S. no one pays Inquisitor ransom. Inquisitor Zarius, is now run by best AI. Girl, Luxembourg, five, six, ten. Robert, E, Rye the, Pie, the Great Ralphie, the Mexican the Wicked Hamster, Zane John Boy, Denver, Glad, Glad and Dad, Jack Traven's annoying friend. And why am I doing this?